Hello everyone, welcome to my channel on 3D Topics. The 3D package I'm using today is FreeCAD. My particular version that I'm using is, because this is the important thing, because FreeCAD has changed so much, it seemed like I look at one video, the stuff don't work, so I want to say which version of FreeCAD I'm using. I'm using Zero. 20.2 so that's the version of free cat I'm using and maybe when other people make their videos too then maybe they should give out the information of what version they use because I'm starting to discover in my short time of using because I don't even use it for about five months four months that it seemed like some stuff don't work from version to version I learned that the hard way like I did today today I, said, I believe I said it earlier, but if not, I'll say it again. We're going to learn how, how to make a tourism spiral. So, let's jump right in. Create new. And I'm, I'm assuming that you're not at the... I'm still new to uh, free care, but I'm not at the three-week level. You know that level I'm talking about. I'm not at the basic, basic level. I'm still basic, but I'm not super basic. So if you listen to this video, I'm assuming that you have a little bit of skill at using FreeCAD, like going to part design and parts, sketcher, etc. All right, so let's jump right in. We need to go into parts, step one. And also with FreeCAD, you know, from because I have it on several computers, at least two or what, three of them, the icons are always arranged in different locations on all of them. So whatever I'm using, Hopefully, I'll tell you which icon I'm clicking on. I'm clicking on the one that's called Create Primitives. You should see it right there. Create Primitives. I clicked on it. Now, I'm going to choose the Spiral. Right there. I choose Create. Oh, and you can manipulate the Spiral too. Right here with these buttons, growth, number of rotations, radius, growth just deals out how big your spiral going to be. I thought it was, well, and one thing I do like about this, when you hit create, it show you right there what it's doing. Then, when I change things, you see that? That's what growth doing. Uh, it doesn't, it's like it's, put it right back there, on one. Create number of rotations three close. I choose create close. Let's see what it do. Mm. I'm gonna start it again. Oh, I got so many spirals right here. See, I didn't know that. I guess I could. I want to close all these up again. So we gotta be aware of that. Don't hit don't keep clicking on spiral 50 and 60 times. Create. I wish it okay, well I will go back and check a model when I make one. Create spiral. There. I didn't hit create yet, so it didn't make nothing. I'm gonna leave it like it is. Create it. There it is. And my model name in you. So I'm just going to give it a growth of two. Let's look. Now, earlier, it was updating. Because if I hit create again, it'll probably make another one. Watch this. I'm going to hit create. Say it made two. That's not good. So I'm going to get rid of my first one. Let's see what happens if I get rid of my first one. So, so keep that in mind. Every time you hit create, it's going to make a new one. I learned that today. Let me go back to task. I have a growth of two. Number of rotations. One, two, three. You can go up. But if I hit create, it's going to make another one. So I'm just going to leave it alone. Earlier when I was doing it, it was making everything live. It was giving me a live view. Maybe since I got my uh, speaker hooked up to it. It may be acting up, but you got the idea. 
and growth going to just choose how big it is. I'm going to make it four. Create. I'm going to hop my first one. Let's see how that looks. Okay. So growth just made it smaller. Here's my second one. Yeah, it's bigger. First one. Here. Hide it. Second one. The growth. That's what it did. I guess the bigger the number, the smaller it gets. I'm going to go back and check it again. I'm going to give it a growth. I'm going to make it go to 10. Let's see what happened. Create. I'm going to hide one. Yeah, so with growth, it has changed how, how big you, you want it. So that's a good thing right there. So all of them won't be the same size. So growth, like normal thing, like in life. When we're born, we're a baby, we're tiny. Yeah, so that makes the older it gets, the, the bigger your number, I guess the smaller it gets. So that's your growth, the size of it. I'm going to go back to my original. I hit delete. Delete both my original one. There it is right there. So, and I only, <clears throat> so that's new for me. So, I've done that. I'm content. So, I choose close. So, that was three, four right there. So, next, let me go to, now we go back to our beloved part design. Part design. I want to, let's, let, let me look over here. I want to create a new part, a new body. Inside the body, I want to make this. And here in my left hand, down here in the right corner, the lower right, is giving me an idea of which way my axes are. Okay, let me make it look better for me. I can make it look more understandable. Right, in. right there. So I see Z is, is on basically... Z and X. So I'm going to try to put it back right there. And if I go to my side, since it don't got no dimension to it, it's, you know, it's, it's flat. It's there, but it's flat. As you can see, it's there, but it don't have no thickness. So I guess I'll stay with top root for now. All right. I'm going to choose XZ plane. There it is, right there. And, oh, whoops. Let's go back to sketch. Right there. Now, for me, I'm just going to use a rectangular shape. Now, to make it work, it's best to put it right there in that middle and turn yellow. So, I'm going to make it up there. Drop it right there. Now, I'm not going to add no constraints to it. Because that's not that's not what this video about making constraints. But if you've been working with a uh, free care like I have for several months, you should know what constraints are. But we don't need constraints right now, so I can choose close. But I want to I'm gonna check it out some more too. Yeah, I'm gonna choose close. And you see right there, I want to try to have one of these two edges. I'm going to have one of these two edges on the edge of my sphere. So that's why so I'm going to move it. I'm just going to nip. I'm just going to move it around until one of my edges touch that sphere edge or close as possible. It don't have to be exact, but you just want to close as possible. So let me click down here on attachments. Attachment right here. So i click on the word attachment right here. Click on the word attachment. Then click on that. Now I have my <coughs> placement. I can move that little uh that sketch around. That green sketch. I can move it. Now since I've been doing the earth, I know what to move. X. You see that? Oh, that's good right there. It's perfect. I don't have to do no more. It's good enough. Now, it don't have to be exactly there. It's good enough to the eyeball. And I zoomed in immensely. That's an immense 
level zooming. It's like it's dead on. So for that, I can hit apply. I can hit close, zoom out. So now I just shift it and see how it looks. So it looks good. Oh, see now, you see right here? My sketch is too big. My sketch is too big. Here's the reason why. One dot is here on this line, and another dot is on this line. So, let's go and edit our sketch. I click on my sketch. Let me see if I can just change this. Yes, I can do that. I'll make it sort of thin like that. Like I said, I don't need to use no constraints. I'm just showing you how to use this stuff. And there it is. All right, so then also, if you wanted to, I don't have to have my green sketch. I can move it right in the center of that line, but I'll leave it at, at the top of it right now. This was the part that was in a video that I learned about earlier that I had to learn on my own. Maybe he didn't have version 0.20.2. I discovered you had to do this because if not, you're going to have a world of trouble. You, it won't work. I have to click on my uh, spiral here in the model task. Click on spiral or left click on it. Right click. I just want to see if it's like, I can't move. I don't see no action to move it. So I'm physically going to take it and move it to the body. Now it's there. This the part that makes us win where it said base feature. Now I can do more with it. So now I'm going to go up here to where it says, uh, I'm going to see which of these tools I need. I hope I can say, oh, additive pipe. You see the word right there. That's the one I need. Additive pipe. It says sweep a selected sketch. See, sweep. So I'm going to take my sketch and sweep it around that whole sketch. Oops. I don't want to do it yet, but anyway. So I have to do it now. So I want to choose my sweep object. Path to sweep along. I click on object. I come over here. Click on my sketch. And there it is. That's step one. It did something. Step one, it did something. It did something. Then, step two, you click on OK, and zap. There we go, people. When I watched that first video, it probably said probably was an old version of FreeCAD, but it looked like it was a like new version. It took, it didn't work until I had to add my own thought into it. So what you have to do, take the main thing, take spiral and move it into the body or whatever you decide to call the body. You just move it there. You know, we just call it body right now because it's a demonstration, but you can name the body anything you want. And to prove that it's working, I can go down here to add it to pipe, go back to my sketch, and I'm going to make it even more thinner. I'm going to make it super thin. Close. And we see it updated. Thank you for stopping by, good people, to see how to make a Torsen spiral, a basic introduction. All right, until the next time, people, keep learning about free care like I am. Peace.